The way we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online uh, for our daily social media. And now we're joined by Erica in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. It's a busy week in Seoul. <laughs> like a really busy one. Yeah. Seoul, lots of things happening. Yeah. Seoul Fashion mm. Week is apparently kicking That's off right. today. Um, and uh, come Wednesday, Freeze and Kiosk, some of the biggest oh, art fairs right. are kicking off. Yeah. And I think it's what happens simultaneously mm. with that. Many galleries yeah many even cafes turned into kind of these like lounge style gathering spaces. is that right yes oh. every year it gets bigger for the last three <laughs> years anyway <laughs> all right that's how you know it's fall the beginning of fall anyway and we're already getting ready for the, arguably the biggest fireworks yes, festival in korea that's right, right. Uh, it's the 2024 international fireworks festival not this month uh, we still yeah. have about a month to go but uh, it's coming uh, hanwha corporation announced on monday that it's going to host the seoul international fireworks festival 2024 uh, at yoido hangang park in seoul uh, it's taking place on october Fifth, uh, this year's theme is paint your dreams like fireworks. <laughs> uh, the festival is going to feature teams from South Korea, the United States, and Japan. Um, you know, it's going to begin with the Japanese team. Uh, they're going to present a vibrant display of, uh, I guess, special art. You okay. could call it under the theme fireworks display. Pretty f- straightforward. Uh, the American team is going to follow with a show titled "Dreaming of California." Yeah. A lot of it is just lining up for me. I don't yeah. know. I grew up in California. Kind of identify with that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like capturing that spirit of freedom and ah. uh, aspirations. Ah, yeah. the old Californian dream. <laughs> yeah, and the grand finale is going to be delivered by Hanhua, okay. representing South Korea. And uh, their goal is to convey a message of hope. To everyone, uh, they plan to create the largest fireworks display in the festival's history mm. with the hopes that more people will be able to enjoy the show from afar. Okay. Uh, to ensure safety at the festival, because as you know, tens of thousands no, gather really. um, at the river mm. to, to watch the fireworks, uh, Hanwha says it has enhanced the features of its Orange Safety app, okay. uh, which was first introduced last year. Uh, the upgraded system is going to monitor real-time crowd density using mobile network data and also adjust the placement of safety personnel mm. to manage the crowd more effectively. Now, a joint operations center is going to be established as well in collaboration with local authorities, including the Yongdung Pugu District Office, the Fire and Disaster Headquarters, mm. and the Seoul Metro. Metropolitan Police Agency. Okay, so I understand that there are selected because people can reserve in advance to watch the fireworks up close. I always assumed it was at either cafes or hotels that had really good views, yeah. or you get there first mm. and set up your picnic blankets. Um, yeah, you can do that, okay. but there it, there's official seating as well. Really? For those of uh, you who want to, you can uh, you can you know reserve these uh, spots for okay. your families, uh, your boyfriends, girlfriends, mm. partners, and friends. Uh, you can do so through the Life Plus Tribe app until September 22nd. So you still have a bit of time. This is why you brought the story early, huh? Yes, that's Let everyone right. know you still have time. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Hanwha is also going to stream the fireworks show on its official YouTube channel uh, and through the dedicated festival app, mm. Orange Play. Okay, but there's something special about seeing it in person. Mm. I, there was a time when I thought, fireworks? Like, do I really need to see that? I'm all grown up, but no, there's still magic in it. And the scale of it it's yeah. just I think that's what kind of blows I my love mind. I love fireworks festival um I remember one year I think fi- I forget exactly what year I th- I'm gonna go for 2011 okay. I was actually at the fireworks show the Seoul wow. International Fireworks Festival to do a live radio show in, in a truck and that was a lot of fun hang on yeah how does that work with sound quality yeah too? It, we made it happen it's loud yeah but somehow and we had live musicians in the <gasps> truck performing oh we with the with the 
Pang PD님. Our current producer, Our current Chiwon. producer. You guys are so lucky. I was always in the studio. <laughs> Take me out somewhere. It doesn't it have to be funny. the fireworks festival. It's just the, it's just the vibe, you know. I'm sure. There's, there's so many people and everyone's excited and it's it's, it's fall, right? Yeah. So there's a nice breeze in the air. And there's something about, um, you know, being at the river in the fall season, uh-huh. the sunset, everything just, it just aligns it's just perfect. to make for a really fun evening. We get a short window of this like perfect yeah. condition to be outdoors. It's usually October, I That's think. That's right. <laughs> a little bit later these days, yeah. so November's kind of beautiful, mm. too. All right, so the Seoul International Fireworks Festival is one of South Korea's two major fireworks events mm-hmm. alongside the other one in the port city of Busan. That's right. Now, uh, the Seoul Fireworks Festival is hosted by Hanwha Group as part of its social contribution efforts. Mm. The Busan Fireworks Festival, another big fireworks festival yeah. here in South Korea, is organized, in fact, by the Busan Metropolitan Government. Uh, the Seoul International Fireworks Festival Festival now in its 24th year. It debuted back in 2000. Right? Wow. Yes, exactly. Has consistently attracted record breaking crowds. Last year, for example, it's estimated that around 1.5, 1.05 million people attended. Um, the event always takes place at Yong, uh, Yoido Hangang Park, uh, right along, mm. well, very close to the Yuksan building, yes. 63 building, yeah. which is owned by Hanhua and. Uh, yeah, like I said, if if you if you haven't been yet, I I think a lot of like Seoul lights, especially because it takes place every year, they always think, ah, oh, I'll, I'll go, go next, next year. year. And I know a lot of people who haven't been, mm. but uh, I I promise you, just try once, mm. you know, and you want to go back yeah. each year. Do you think that's why the crowd gets bigger every year? <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> once you're once you get there, especially after the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's nice to be outdoors, yes. period. And, and really, the fireworks display is massive. I've right. never seen something of this scale. Now, I've been to many theme parks across the world, yeah. including the one with the Mickey Mouse. And this is even bigger. Yeah. All right, on to our second story this morning. Decorating the inside of your fridge, as we mentioned in the intro. Yes, a big deal. I'm so glad you brought this story because when I stumbled <laughs> across it on the New York Times, I thought, hang on, is this trend real or is yeah. this for the niche? It's real. People decorating the inside <laughs> of their refrigerators. And I shared the story with our producer yesterday she's yeah. like she was joking obviously but she said tiktok is slowly killing humanity hey <laughs> but i get it i get it it's like we need these extra things it was a joke. to do but i, I get the joke because yeah. it is really extra we're not talking about organizing uh-huh. it so everything is like tidied up yep. we're really talking about a new trend uh-huh Fridgescaping. We have a new terminology. That's right, and it's trending on TikTok so and must social be media. Yeah, you know, organizing your fridge helps you see what's inside. It saves time, reduces food waste, comes with a lot of benefits. <laughs> but uh, have you ever heard of something called fridgescaping? This is new, right? Yeah, so it's a viral trend that's all about decorating the inside of your refrigerator. Uh, the trend shows that even practical spaces like your fridge can be made beautiful. <laughs> Now, uh, while making your fridge look nice isn't something new, fridgescaping basically takes it to the next level. Uh, The trend involves decorating your fridge with flowers, (laughs) uh, even framed photos of your loved ones. (laughs) Stuffed animals. Vases, flower vases, stuffed animals, and uh, all kinds of other items to make it look more inviting. And some people even go as far as changing the theme of their fridge regularly. For example, one TikTok user who goes by the name name Lindsay Judish turned her fridge into a Bridgerton inspired theme, which she called what else but Fridgerton. It's kind of <laughs> extraordinary, oh boy. isn't yeah. it? Um, and then she also created uh, <laughs> fridge designs inspired by The Hobbit. Oh. You name it. Yeah. Okay, so to a certain extent, um, I guess if it's TikTok specific, it's to generate buzz, buzz. and bring people to your platform. And I guess it can be fun for the person doing it. Absolutely. Because yeah. I'm wondering if I did this for my husband who's coming back next Monday from his <laughs> business trip, I'm not sure if he would be amused or ask me, Oh, try it. Are, are you bored? <laughs> Why don't you try? I don't. I'm, I'm and kind share of a, the story with us. I would love to hear. Actually, I will try because this is kind of my aesthetic. 
like, like no. There we go. I got a confession out of her. No shame. Like I, I think it's just really fun. It, it, if it'll fail to impress, I'm not sure, but I'll let you know. Yep. Okay. So it's it's all about aesthetics, yeah. right? It's yes. It's not yes and no. Uh, it's mainly about the looks, but it does offer some practical benefits too, namely reducing food waste. Okay. So fridge scaping encourages people to incorporate fresh produce mm. into their design, like mm. placing asparagus in a mason jar or <laughs> berries in a porcelain basket. This makes your food more accessible and more appealing, <laughs> uh, which helps you uh, use it up before it goes bad. Okay. Now, fans of the trend say they waste less food when it's disp- displayed beautifully. I think that's a good point because mm. it, it would get me to do that. If it looks nice, it would make me and reach you can for it more. see it. Everything, right? Because it's displayed, right? Instead of like right. hiding in your fr- veggie drawer. Exactly. Because yeah. once everything goes in a veggie drawer wrapped up in plastic and I, then you forget about it for like a few days and then bye-bye. And you know, some people say they find a beautifully decorated fridge makes them more excited to mm-hmm. use those ingredients and cook. Mm. Some people say they're cooking more uh, than ever because their fridge looks so appealing and the ingredients look so beautiful as well. All right. So not just for the aesthetics, but I'm going to give this a go to see if I can really use up my groceries because that would impress me and everybody else in my family. Sure, I have tendency to buy when I'm hungry and I over shop and I never use up my ingredients. Sounds like a familiar story. I'm sure to many. Right. But if you're wondering how do you even start fridgescaping, there's no right or wrong way. (laughs) But first of all, you do have to start by emptying your fridge, giving it a good clean, all those shelves, and then carefully putting everything back, sort of like, you know, envisioning in your mind where everything is going to go, and Mm. then use, uh, you know, the the decorations, I guess, like vases and... picture frames because I do have porcelain baskets I do have a lot of mason yeah. jars because who doesn't that was like a whole trend it <laughs> yes. was a whole aesthetic mason it was even jars. used in weddings remember that yep. the whole like farm I do. culture it, it turned into something much more high scale yeah Anyway, I'll try out for it. <laughs> okay, on to our final story today. A family's backyard funeral for their three-year-old daughter's pacifier. Yeah. But of course. Some um, really interesting stories today, huh? I was going to say, I mean, parting is difficult for the young yeah. ones, but if I've you heard, give it a whole ceremony. I heard from friends, you know, it's it's really, it can be traumatic yeah. for a toddler to sort of give up their pacifier. I have seen babies who throw fits for Tantrums. hours Absolutely. on end. Because they want their pacifier. They're attached to it. I yeah, get it. exactly. So uh, Jake Bishop said when his three-year-old daughter was prepared, well, well, unprepared to say goodbye to her passy, they actually <laughs> decided to hold an Im- impromptu funeral for the pacifier. And uh, they, the family sort of prepared a quick backyard funeral. And uh, they <laughs> obviously filmed everything. And uh, this video was shared on social media. It's garnered over 2 million views. And everyone found it completely adorable. It's so and original quite, and quite sensible, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, now the dad was the funeral officiant. He was dressed up in a casual T-shirt, shorts, topped with a black coat, and uh, he even delivered a eulogy for You're- the pacifier. <laughs> Uh, the the pacifier's name is Passy, actually. Okay. And you can see the daughter sort of sitting there mm. listening, and she's quite serious, right? And mm. the dad goes, we're gathered here to remember Pass, the pacifier, Bishop, one of the greatest Passies to have ever graced the lips of a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, um, you know, and then the, the, the dad asks his daughter to stand by him as uh, the bagpipes played, mm. and everyone gives Passy a send-off. And, uh, you know, she was quite all right about it the next day she was fine and she wasn't looking for passy anymore. she wasn't looking for passy anymore so this is not just a cute moment mm. not only is it original and inspired yeah it works that's right so the next day apparently she got to see a surprise package waiting for her at the pacifier's grave um you know she got some goodies for her birthday like glow stick bath parties candies toys and even a new bike so Aww. you know it's it's the end of that era and she sort of like moved on and they did it in a rather symbolic way that I thought was really sweet. I mean, what a way to yeah. mark an occasion, yeah. right? It's such a natural way of talking about death, too. I know I know, it's just an animate yes. object, but a two or three-year-old, this is a difficult parting, right? Exactly. And for and, and for her, the parents be, to be so empathetic about it and instead creative. of saying, no, no, you're, you're a big girl now. No. no more pacifiers for you. That could be, 
you know, traumatizing. Really traumatizing for the kid. Who says millennial parents aren't cool? They're really cool. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I approve of this. I'm assuming they're millennials. Yep. They look like they would yep, check off yep. the millennial list. Thank you so much, Erica. <laughs> sure, as always. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.